Hi, good evening. Uh, this is Dr. Paul Zeitz. I'm the co-founder of Build a Movement 2020 and the founder of Justice News Network, JNN. I'm really excited to be here tonight. It's uh, a Wednesday, February 19th, around 8.30 p.m. here in Silver Spring, Maryland. We're at the Silver Spring Library where we were just attending a regional meeting of the Extinction Rebellion. And tonight, we're gonna to have an interview with a dear colleague of ours and friend, John Spee, who is the, uh, involved with the Extinction Rebellion in New York City, as, as well as here in Montgomery County, Maryland. So welcome, John, great to have you oh, on the you. Justice News Network. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're uh, really inspired by your work. So I'd love to hear your, just your story about like, how you got involved with the Extinction Rebellion. Yeah, so uh, I've been involved with the Extinction Rebellion uh, New York City chapter since last August. Uh, I moved up to New York City for a job um, and wasn't saw all the things that were happening around the world related to the climate and was really getting freaked out and wasn't feeling like I was doing enough in, uh, in my day-to-day -day life. So I found um, Extinction Rebellion. I saw some of the things they were doing over in the UK and in London with their protests and they just founded a group in New York. Um, so I attended one of their meetings. I really um, agreed with the, their message and what they were trying to achieve. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Extinction Rebellion, it is a nonviolent direct action uh, group or movement that is um, decentralized. So that means we have uh, groups in all different cities around the world. Um, the goal of this is to build a movement to disrupt business as usual and draw attention to the climate crisis. Uh, Extinction Rebellion in the U.S. has four demands. Uh, demand one being tell the truth, which we are trying to get governments and media corporations and uh, schools and all this to start teaching and telling the truth about what's going on in, the, in our environment and our climate and reporting on it with the urgency that it demands. Uh, demand number two is act now. Uh, we are, are demanding that we get to net zero carbon emissions by 2025, which basically means right now, um, start taking massive steps to uh, reduce our CO2 footprint and uh, re restore the damage that we've been doing. Demand number three is a uh, creation of a citizens assembly. Um, the citizens assembly is a pretty complicated thing. I'd advise all of you who are interested in learning more about it to do your research, but essentially it's a representative body um, that will advise on solutions to help solve this crisis. Mm -hmm. And demand number four is a just transition, which means uh, as we transition to a carbon neutral economy or carbon negative economy, we protect the people most vulnerable, those um, com communities of uh, lower socioeconomic status and the ones on the front lines feeling the effects first. Great, thank you, John. Very great work. So as you know, it's 257 days until the November 3rd USA national election. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is possible uh, in, the, in this critical period over the next 257 days? Do you think that it's possible that Americans can join forces and actually transform the way our society is dealing with the climate emergency? Or are you pessimistic and hopeless? No, I'm very optimistic. I've um, just from interacting with people in the DC area, in New York, and other parts of the country, I think people are really starting to wake up and see what's happening. Um, at this point, it's not just hearing about it on the news. People see it every single day in their day-to-day -day lives with flooding and storms and uh, record-breaking highs of temperatures of heat waves and polar vortexes and um, like massive crop losses in the Midwest. So I really think that um, at this point, it's not an abstract anymore. It's, really in people's faces. Um, and we really, uh, you've seen, there's been so much reporting on what this administration has been doing to roll back environmental protections. Um, I think that's really been upsetting to a lot of people. And uh, I really think that um, heading into 2020 election, that climate uh, for the first time is gonna be one of the major um, factors mm -hmm. people are considering in the voting booth where in, his, in past elections it really hasn't. And does Extinction Rebellion have a political party affiliation, or are you cross-partisan? Or, and, and from the people that you've met in the Extinction Rebellion, have you met Democrats, Republicans, Independents, and uh, non-voting eligible? You know, people who are eligible to vote but actually choose not to vote. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we one of the things we say at Extinction Rebellion is we're beyond politics. Um, mm -hmm. We don't 
support one candidate or one political party. This is something, this is a fight that we're all in together. And um, this really is gonna be, a uni we see climate as being a unifying factor that we can all come together on because there are no winners and losers in this fight. And uh, we, to get out of it, we're gonna need everybody's help. Awesome. Great, well thank you so much for joining us yep. tonight. Thank you. On the Justice News Network. Hope to see you again soon. Thanks, have a good night. Good night.